ಶುಗರ್ ಸಪ್ರೇಟ್ ಕಾಫಿ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದ್ರೆ ಶುಗರ್ ಬೇಡ ಐ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಎಗ್ರಿ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಈಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದಸ್ yeah really gives you no <laughs> every flavor i tell you and i feel that when you eat with your hands no it connects you to the food even before you've tasted in your mouth so this of course is the mtr dosa napkin fold so how do you eat your dosa i love to make a hole right here in the center ah. put this ghee and you take that masala and dosa and, and have it that was, is that is the way i like to eat i only met rohan bopanna once but i love him <laughs> well, the you. manner in which he said he's going to savor his masal dosa it's a lonely tour tennis so mm. when you go there so it's nice to interact get to know somebody mm. and then that's when i think the and food really is where you connect mm. i'm curious to know your verdict on this gulab jamun it's uh, very very nice but it does have a distinctively different flavor to it so i'll tell you what that is namaskara folks this is kripal amana gourmet on the road and you're watching food lovers tv i hope you're doing well i hope you're staying safe and strong we're in lalbagh bengaluru at the iconic mawali tiffin room with an icon from the tennis world mr rohan bopanna namaskara namaskara kripal ah oh, welcome welcome to mawali tiffin room yeah absolutely excited to be here something which probably you don't know i've heard so much about this place but ah. never ever been here to this particular oh, really? you know, place so really looking forward to chatting and having a great breakfast with you fantastic so those who follow the world of tennis they all know about your tennis records about your accolades about your championships and also the fact that you serve some very fine aces on court so i thought we'll turn the tables around this time and serve you some of the aces here at this legendary tiffin tindi place absolutely uh, looking forward to all those uh, wonderful things i've read and heard so much and today to actually try it really looking forward to that wonderful yeah. so let's go into mtr mawali tiffin room here at lalbagh and serve namma karnataka icon namma hemme bengaluru boy ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಹುಡುಗ ರೋಹನ್ ಬೋಪಣ್ಣ ಸಮ್ ಟಿಫಿನ್ ಇಯರ್ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಗೋ ಸೊ ಕಂಗ್ರಾಚುಲೇಷನ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆನ್ ಯೋರ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ರೀಸೆಂಟ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಟಿಕೆಟ್ ಎಗೋ ಸೊ ಐಮ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ದಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಯು ನೋ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ರ್ಯಾಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ ಅಪ್ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಸೀಸನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದಟ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಗುಡ್ ಸೌತ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಬ್ರೇಕ್ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆಬ್ಸೋಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಲೆನ್ ಯೂ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಅ ಡೆಕೇಟ್ Now this place has been around for nearly 10 decades. Wow. So it opened in 1924. That's Mr. Yajuna Rai and Maya there, the first generation. And next year this place will celebrate 100 years. So, Amazing. So when you talk about Bengaluru Tiffin, Bengaluru Tindi, this is like a part of history. This is I think where a lot of it was born. I think this is special when you when you see this and you see the culture and the heritage. I'm here 2 months in the whole year. Uh, so I'm uh, you know spread out. So always constantly I come spend some time with the family, my tennis academy, so I'm constantly on the run. So I'm glad that this time I had more time to be here. Fantastic. And it's like uh, you know let me really uh, you know enjoy this moment. And you grew up in Bengaluru? Yes, grew up uh, in Coor and Bangalore. Okay. Yeah, uh, first 14 years of my life in Coor. My parents still live in Coor. Okay. Hence the coffee love ah. came way before the tennis and the Bangalore's home now and uh, been staying here for 20 plus years. 20 plus years. Yeah. So let's walk in. Yeah. Because out here it's not just the food that is special but also the manner in which they prepare things. And as we draw closer to the kitchen we can also smell the coffee. I can already yeah. smell it. Yes.
when you talk about kitchens, everybody talks about open kitchens. But Mahavali Tiffin Room, even back in the day, had this whole concept of open kitchen. So as a customer, you could walk in through the entire place and take a look at how your food is being prepared. See, a lot of times we don't realize it. Today, it's a given thing to go out and eat. But in those days, people were very apprehensive of going out and eating. So therefore, it was necessary to prove to people that our kitchens are clean, our kitchens are neat. And that's how these very open kitchens came into play. And a great vision to uh, so much ahead yes. of time to you know have something like this. So this, of course, are the steamers where the rave idlis are being made. I think we're going to taste some of them. Looking at this, I'm you know, getting more hungry. <laughs> so the idea is to get you to work in appetite. Oh God, huh? it's like the feast of Shiraz only, like literally. <laughs> Have you played a game this morning? I haven't. I haven't. You haven't. Okay. This is the game today. This is the game. <laughs> this is the game. I love is. I love that reply. This is where the iconic MTR Masal Dosa is made and what you see on top there are pools of tuppa. Even better, good for the skin is what I've been told so let's see. Yeah. Wonderful and you know there's a few special things so this is the dosa hitto. So if you look at the dosa batter here it is off white in color. Yes I noticed that yeah. So they use a combination of different rices including some boiled rice, some red rice which is what gives that dosa that color. Amazing. Good to know. Thank you, Prabhala. I mean, you know, otherwise I would have never experienced this. So really, yeah. You can already smell all that tuppa. Yeah, like I said, getting hungry, <laughs> hungry. So whenever I come to MTR, and let's say if I don't have too much of an appetite, all that I do is uh, take a walk through the kitchen. So even if you are not feeling too hungry, by the time you go upstairs, you are ravenously correct, correct. craving for some of that dosa. Every dish here at MTR has to go out with those butlus of ghee. Correct. There you go. So whether it's a idli, whether it's a dosa, everything has butlu of ghee. And this of course is the famous MTR coffee. The famous filter coffee, that's the decoction. That is the magic. That is the magic. That is the magic. Yeah. Oh, wow. is what I need to you know, try and uh, get it, start making at home. I think it's an art, right? Just it to get the art. right amount of milk, right amount of crema on top. What people appreciate about the coffee here is they've held on to tradition. So for instance, out here, MTR is one of those few places where they source the coffee bean. They don't source coffee powder. So they source exactly the bean that they want. I'm told it's mostly Arabica and then a little bit of tea berry. And they roast it, they crush it, they grind it themselves. You'll be served coffee only in two ways. One is in the ceramic cups, or if you're sitting upstairs, you'll be served in the tumblers. There's no paper cup, no thermocol, nothing else. So they they've held on to tradition. I think the World Coffee Conference coming up. Yeah. People should definitely come and uh, try this out. I Absolutely. Think. I think it'd be wonderful, you know, to try a traditional South Indian South filter, filter coffee. coffee. Made yeah. the right way. Yeah. Absolutely. So what is your favorite South Indian different thing? I love uh, rice in general. Ah. So idli I love. Ah. So since you mentioned rava idli being famous, yeah, I'm really yeah. looking forward to that. Today since I'm not practicing, dosa works. Yeah. No problem. I'm okay. Fantastic. So I think on that note, let's head to the dining room and get Rohan Bopanda to savor his first ever rava idli and the Mawandli different room. Masal dosa. Absolutely looking forward to this one. And we are not leaving without Some coffee. Coffee and the ghee especially ah. with the do for the dosa. Maybe a double measure of ghee for you today. <laughs> also this is one of those places that instantly transports you back in time. Right? Yes, so I am sure you have seen the city change a lot. I have indeed, indeed. Uh -huh. When I travel, when I go for two, three months and uh -huh. I come back, uh -huh. and then already I see you see you that know, change. some changes, you know, either some construction, especially because I love to drive. Uh -huh. I think you see the changes Correct, more. happening more.
So also the reason why it's called uh, Mahavali Tiffin Rooms is that it's a series of rooms. So you've got the rooms downstairs, you have multiple rooms here and inside if you go, there's a labyrinth again of private rooms. Oh wow. So we're going to sit in one of those rooms and what, sit. Was this always like this? I mean, or so, something later on they came? Uh, so initially it began in another place in this region itself, okay. in a smaller place. And then they expanded to this space. As the number of diners grew, so I think they carved out more dining spaces. I mean, I've been here today this morning since 7.30, it's 10 o'clock now. I've only seen the crowd build up more and more. I mean, it's incredible, right? The longevity of a place for 100 years, and even after 100 years, it still maintains. That's excellent. And speaking of longevity, I think that's also an important aspect when it comes to sport, right? I mean, you've been playing the game for how long now? 20 plus years professionally. 20 years professionally? Yeah. Wow. I made my debut for India in 2002. Okay. So, yeah, so it's been a long, long career indeed. Really happy the way I've persevered myself in okay. trying to understand each journey. Okay. And I think that is what has helped me, you know, uh, having short term goals ah. makes a difference. I think, you know, it's always made a difference, you know, means yes, you, everybody has a long term vision, vision, but I always felt when I broke it down, and then achieved something, kept moving, kept pushing me to, and uh, didn't get me saturated as well. So you saw that short term goal within grasp. Exactly. So you could work towards it as Absolutely. opposed to something very far away that you may or may not get to. Correct. Right? Correct. And you know, so a lot of times it discourages you, you know, mm. initially when you're trying to go because the journey is always hard. I mean, no matter which field you are, mm. it is a tough, tough, uh, needs a lot of discipline and everything. Mm. So. In terms of that, I think the short-term goals made a huge difference in, you know, in helping me grow and constantly push myself. Fantastic. So yeah. I hope in your immediate short-term goal, you're seeing the dosa in Italy. Oh, way. <laughs> that is like right, right here, right now. Let's go. Let's get yeah. to the table here. Which is your favorite place to go and shoot and actually, you know, enjoyed it the most? I don't believe in the concept of favorites. If it's your last meal ever, ah. that will be your favorite. That's what I meant by. I mean, if it's my last, last meal uh, would perhaps be my mom's prawn pula. Ah, there you go. See, see now. It <laughs> what about you? What's your favorite food? Definitely akki roti. Pandigari with akki ah. roti baguette. <laughs> Nothing like it, but <laughs> well, we are sitting here at MTR, which is a bastion of uh, the. No, no, absolutely. <laughs> but but I mean, that's just, uh, I'm just saying a last meal ever. But yeah. Namaskara. Chala ke dera. Namaskara. So, so you first time bharte dera. So first time bandre na rava idli try maar ke chala. Mathe? Masala dosa. Ah. Rava idli kodi, masala dosa kodi. Sol pa tuppa adhik hai. Tuppa idli default bharte. First ni wo yen dar dar filter coffee kodi. Ah. Ah. Ado best. So you're a big coffee lover. My coffee love always was. Uh, way before my tennis. Really? Uh, I grew up in Kurg. My parents still lived there, so hence the coffee plantation, the love for coffee came uh, first. And then my tennis came much later. Really? So, yeah. I think coffee runs in uh, your veins. Truly, it runs in yeah. the veins, I think. And, uh, you know, especially now traveling the world, huh. I love to go and explore and try different, different coffees. I've given a lot of. Uh, coffee beans to the tennis players oh, and wow. uh, today when uh, we go to a tennis tournament if the coffee is not good they look at me and come to the locker room and they say Rohan the coffee is not good I'm like I can't do anything with this but you know that's how it's been and uh, if so, somebody finds a good coffee spot immediately there are a few bunch of players who text each other saying this is the coffee spot to go to this week and, and to try it out. So, so by yeah. default I think part of your suitcase is a bunch of Indian coffees. Huh? A bunch a bunch of Indian coffees yeah. and I really feel that our Indian coffee is mm. not well known as yet. A lot yes. of people when I travel, when I give them the coffee, they are actually surprised that India has coffee. Mm. Mm. You know, so uh, it's, uh, you know, I'm very happy to, you know, take our beans, uh, you know, from Kurg and uh, give it to all the guys. So what are people's reactions? So I'm sure when you travel on the circuit, you have other players that you're interacting with. Is there a lot of camaraderie uh, despite all the on-court uh, I think there's a huge camaraderie because okay. I feel uh, you know, everybody starts their journey together kind of whenever they come into the circuit, the locker room is the safest place. Okay. Because nobody's really watching and everybody's completely relaxed. Mm. You know, when on the court they give their heart out, play their best and all want to win. But when they come back, it is like a family. This is for you. Thank you. 
ಶುಗರ್ ಸಪ್ರೇಟ್ ಕಾಫಿ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿದ್ರೆ ಶುಗರ್ ಬೇಡ ಐ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಎಗ್ರಿ ವಿತ್ ಯು ಆನ್ ದಟ್ ಅರೇಬಿಕ್ How do you like to take your coffee? First cup of coffee always with milk. Yeah. After that black. And is it like a filter coffee? Yeah, filter coffee. I travel with my own uh, oh, filter. Oh really? The South Indian filter. Ah. I like to have that first cup at least feel good and then rest of the day I'm good to go. So like you were saying, I mean India makes some fantastic coffee which is still not very well known the world over. But of course now things are changing. Also the fact that you're an ambassador for the upcoming World Coffee Conference that's going to be happening in Bengaluru. So tell us a little more about that. No, I think I'm uh, extremely happy to be the ambassador for that the World Coffee Conference. I have a very interesting connect with coffee and uh, you know since I'm traveling in the world also I feel our Indian coffee needs to be known. I have a Ron Bopana master blend mm. which I've started with uh, Maverick and Farmer. So I've constantly taken my coffee and uh, given it to a lot of the tennis players and they are actually pleasantly surprised with uh, mm. how good the coffee has been and uh, I'm glad that the World Coffee Conference is happening here in Bangalore. I think a lot of people traveling across to the city will get uh, to taste our coffee and i think that that's what we need to mm. really make a difference uh, in the in the world fantastic you know i don't want to waste even a drop of that tumba uh, <laughs> so therefore i want to make sure i Okay there give you it go. a generous it's, drench it's an art in itself <laughs> There we go and firstly feel its soft pillowy warmth <laughs> it truly is it truly is <laughs> you know this is a sort of pillow that you want to s- <laughs> no no this no. right on <laughs> but it is yeah and you know for me the first bite always is just that idli by itself really Yeah, but you please feel free to Mm, that is nice. Very very nice. A rabe idli is also one of the healthiest idlis that you can eat. So typical idli goes through fermentation and therefore you have the probiotic. Now you'll ask me there's no fermentation here. So where does the probiotic come from? For every 400 grams of rave, there's about 700 grams of yogurt that goes into the mix. The mushroom goes in with a bunch of greens. So you see there's some coriander there. Mm, delicious. Huh? This is I mean no matter how much I travel across the globe, rave idli uh, you don't get anywhere. You don't get anywhere. You don't get. You get idli but rave idli no chance. So your favorite is a regular idli. I mean I wish I could yeah. have rave idli but yeah the idli if we're given a option in uh, mm. south indian dish idli is a go to So typically when you're traveling and you're doing breakfast what sort of breakfast are you doing usually just cereal some eggs ah okay that's something which is uh, you know not too heavy basic basic stuff I mean they're easy to digest digest yeah I mean if idli was there I would happily have idli every day no problem at all And what's food at home like When I'm here it's dosa idli mm. is is a homemade dosa or you know idli is definitely something okay. I indulge in more So this is a typical accompaniment they also call it a bombay sagu so it's a potato sort of a gravy but it's thickened with a bit of gram flour The protocol would be and all it may seem a little too much on camera you break the idli down into its particles and then you combine that with the chutney and the sagu there you go then you ensuring that every grain of that rave captures the flavor of the chutney and the sagu and nothing like eating in the hands yeah really gives you <laughs> no, every flavor i tell you 
and i feel that when you eat with your hands no it connects you to the food even before you've placed in your mouth they also say when you touch your food it also kind of charges your appetite it gets your salivary glands moving and you are better equipped for digestion I traveled in Japan. I went to a really traditional huh. sushi place. Huh. They were serving literally one, mm. one sushi at different times. And he said the typical way was to eat yes. the hands. That's right. One more idli, or we are set for the dosa. I think we are set for the dosa. Actually, to be honest. Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, I completely polished it. <laughs> nice. I was, I was worried. I was thinking, you know, I know that you're going to be traveling in the next few days, and you're going to be back on the circuit. So I was wondering and asking your people, well, is Rohan going to eat? The way I look at it, I'm not going to be anywhere close to this for the next six weeks. Ah. So might as well enjoy it, and then anyway, I'll be eating all the healthy food when I'm traveling. Fantastic. So, so time now for the dosa. Hundred percent time for those. <laughs> Masal oh dosa. Oh my God! Look at that. With the chutney and sambar. and the and sambar. sambar. Sambar is my favorite. Yeah. Favorite. So this, of course, is the MTR dosa napkin fold. So how do you eat your dosa? I love to make a hole right here in the center. Ah. Put this ghee, and you take that masala and dosa and, and have it. I that was. Is, that is the way I like to eat. I only met Rohan Bopanna once, but I love him. <laughs> For the you. manner in which he said he's going to savor his masala dosa, absolutely. So. Some ghee. Yes, so, I'll tell you what is the reason why what you said, Rohan, is spot on. Oof. Ah, this looks delicious. <laughs> Deliciously good, calorie free. Do you consume ghee when you're on the circuit? No, you take a bottle. <laughs> So everybody says ghee is good fat, uh, but question is how, how much, much is how, how much, much is good fat? Right? Uh, uh, right, that is the thing. The reason why what you said is very correct. Now this dosa is hot. It's come off the hanchu. Now, what happens at this point in time? The ghee that is used to make that dosa is in its molten form, right? The biggest carrier of flavors in our mouth is fat, whether it's oil, whether it's butter, whether it is tuppa. Now, when you go in for this dosa right in the center, you're basically getting all components of the dosa, right from that dosa itself to the palya and that ghee exactly. in its. In its prime. I guess I, I mean I didn't look at it that way. I just thought that is the right way to really enjoy it. Yeah. yeah but yeah. But now. Go good for it. Oh, oh wow. I'm getting all the flavors. But to pa. How would you rate this dosa? People always ask me. I'm rating my food. What do you think of this dosa? I think it's going to be demolished within a minute. Yeah. That's how, that's how good it is. Mm, excellent. Can't yeah. believe I have not come here for this long. Yes. Really missed something, but I'm glad finally made it. So if you look also at the way the dosa crunches, it's a very different. So it's got that very grainy. Granular sort of a crunch, and that's because of the combination of the rice. How's the sambar? Sambar in Bengaluru, I think, is the winner. Mm. Always. A lot of people when I go to Chennai and they say no, the sambar is. But some some reason wherever I go, of course, maybe a little biased, but you I know Bengaluru sambar is. The Tamil Nadu sambars are more fortified in the lentils. It's very rich in the lentil portion. Whereas in the Karnataka sambar, there are few things to it. One is there is lentils, but it's not too much. There is a tomato that goes into it, so there's always a bit of tang. 
and a south canara sambar there is also a bit of bella a little bit of jaggery that's added and that sweetness balances the sourness of the tomato and the hunse and nuga tamarind not only am i having amazing dosa but also getting to know so much <laughs> about it which is now makes it even more nicer and what i personally feel is that this sambar makes for a better companion to the dosa because it's not very thick it soaks into it penetrates into the pores of the dosa into the ghee into the ghee <laughs> yeah so are you exploring food when you go out i always explore yeah i'm a big foodie mm i love going to every different restaurant cuisine and that is what I uh, when we travel now, uh-huh. I tell my wife uh, to our daughter give her all kinds of food because I think that's the only way to really understand food and whether you don't become a fussy eater. Right? Mm. And you know because you don't know where in the next few years someone can be or which part of the world you are. But if you're you know as long as you enjoy food, I think you know you can manage anywhere. So apart from the akki roti and the pandi curry, what else are your favorites? I mean, the noodle puttus. Hmm. That noodle puttu we make. That's right. The steamed rice, which is then which goes through the press. Correct. Like Correct. the shabi ke, what we call yeah, here. Absolutely. They have an interesting combination with the noodle puttu, where um, we have it with uh, bellat neer, which is a jaggery water. water. Oh. It's, it's a traditional thing, actually. Yeah. 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 I don't know if you ever it. tried that. That is definitely something to. Try uh, noodle puttu and bellat uh, neer. Bellat neer. Akki roti and noodle puttu. If I have, I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then the various curries. Various curries, of course. Uh-huh. You know, you have so many different options of, uh, you know, whether they have, they have it with the chicken or the uh, lamb. Vegetables. There's a very uh, interesting way they do the mushroom curry. Kumbu mm. curry. It's called kumbu curry. Kumbu curry. Yeah. Kumbu curry. Yeah. yeah. So that is also a traditional. Uh, we have to do it, and also bamboo mm. called bimbala. They do it. Two different. These things are very unique, uh, very acquired taste. You know what I find about Kodava food? At least whenever I have had the opportunity to have some very traditional meals, I find that there is also a lot of focus on food that's foraged or produced, right? Whether it's the ferns, the mushrooms, yeah. or the bamboos. There is a lot of attention given to these very. Like I was talking to a friend the other day, who's again a Kodava, and he was telling me about this place where they get some sort of mushroom that looks like enuki mushrooms. Oh wow! And he says I found that in uh, Kurg. I said, well, first of all, was it safe to eat? He says, well, I'm fine. And yeah. I think that's the other thing because I think with Kodavas, they're so in tune with the land, right? Yeah, because it's also yeah. about the land. Maybe this is a perception that we on the outside have. Is that Kodava food is all about pandi curry, pandi curry, pandi curry? But then I think there is so much more. Absolutely, I mean there is no? so much more of a variety to it. Of course, the tradition is pandi curry and lakhi uh, roti, but you know, there is so much. I mean, uh, uh, no matter which cook house you go to, uh, you will find that variety, uh, and that hospitality is just incredible, yeah. incredible. You know, so. So the Kodava is traditionally a warrior race, Absolutely, right? Yeah, the hunting was uh, hunting, the hunting was wild boar was a. Yeah, uh, back then, but I think was a lot so, of people. Yeah. So there is a lot of focus on enjoying life. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. I think that's where the calmness, you know, in general, has mm. come up. You know, of really finding small things to enjoy that moment. Mm. You know, and I feel really from going up from Cook now to travel so many countries that you understand the journey so much better. You understand, uh, you know, a lot of people, the culture. Mm. You know, and I think uh, you know, thanks to the upbringing, also you know, has helped in a big way. You know, of appreciating each and everything, whether it was food, whether it's travel, people, every. I mean, you know, I've made so many friends across the world. Today, I can say I can go to up to 50 countries, but not really. Don't have to meet them, but I can just text them and ask them where to go, which is non-touristy. You know, places and everything, which is I think amazing. That's I think special friends. You know, you end up making. And uh, you know, I have a close set of friends from Coo who I grew up with. Okay. Who you know, extremely, we are a close knit. Okay. And also, of course, on the tennis circuit, it's uh, such a small family. I I feel it's nice. It's nice. Mm. I mean, it uh, makes it very unique. 
So it's all about enjoying life's moments. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah, no, because uh, it's a lonely tour, tennis. Hmm. So when you go there, so it's nice to interact, get to know somebody, hmm. and then that's when I think the and food really is where you connect. Hmm. That's you know, right. That's you know because especially when you're playing through the day, yes, everybody's busy, but at dinner. There's not many matches happening that day. So you end up going with other players yeah. and sitting down, exploring food and also trying their cuisine maybe from that country and the, hence the food love also comes food in. Food love. And I think from this little conversation that I've had with Rohan, well I know for sure that he's a true food lover. Huh? Enjoying uh -huh. life's culinary pleasures like this Masal Dose at MTR. As you can see, I've they bought the rava idli and the dosa. <laughs> You're also a very quick eater. I am, I am. Yeah? Extremely quick. Oh. My wife learned uh, eat quick after about six months after we got married when she was traveling. Huh. Sometimes the food comes, she's like, uh, you know, maybe we'll eat together. And quickly she learned if it came first, she start eating because, uh, you know, I eat so fast. And I'll be just sitting and waiting. <laughs> I think on that note, I better focus on my dosa and finish the rest of it and we'll get back to our conversation with Rohan. Sir, gulab jam. Some roots, sir. I love that thoughtfulness. He's also pouring out a little bit for you to taste. Do you want to use the same glass? Yes, I want to use the same glass. I want to use the same glass. Okay, fantastic. Wonderful. You said gulab jamun. So we had to do that. And this is a very interesting sweet. It's called the dum rot. It is made of an ingredient called the buddha kumbla kai. So it's basically these large, humongous ash gourds that roughly are 15, 20, 25 kilos. The bigger the ash gourd, the better. Yeah, it's, I mean, we grow it at home and cook, so yeah. I, I've seen that, yeah. So that is shredded, cooked, and then combined with a whole bunch of khoa, milk solids, and uh, there's some semolina that goes into it, and of course, tuppa. <laughs> there's no getting away <laughs> from tuppa. The tuppa is the magic, magic here. Correct. Maybe make a beginning with the... Dumrot. How do you spell this? D U M R O T. R O T. So oh, basically, the reason why it's called Dumrot is that it's cooked in an oven over dum, and rot refers to the crust that is typically formed on top. So there's a darkish kind of a crust. So here they make it in a mold of sorts. So therefore, you don't see the crust. But sometimes, traditionally, if you go to those places, there's a thick crust, a darkened crust that's formed on top. That is referred to as a rot. Perfect. Very nice, not too sweet. Ah. Interesting, never had it before, first time. There's a bit of clove that you're also tasting. Interesting, actually, but like I said, gulab jamun <laughs> is my favorite, so my eyes more on that. <laughs> it's what I love. So I'm a quick learner. So next time your coffee kit will also include two silver tumblers. I so so I can actually I mean. visualize you on court. There's a break, drinks break. Everybody's getting their power, energy power drinks. Power is an energy drink. And yeah. there's Rohan. <laughs> Having a cup of coffee. You know, I think the funny part is uh, uh, a majority of the tennis players have an espresso shot before going to the court. Really? Backboard. Yeah. Because it really gets them going. Gives you that caffeine yeah. burst. Absolutely. So ah. it's you know, coffee is a big hit in the tennis circuit. Ah, okay. Yeah. So do you also do that? Do you have some coffee before a game? Yeah, I do. I do, okay. I do, yeah. Sometimes, you know, it does definitely help. This gives you yeah. that buzz. Yeah, gives sometimes you. because you're waiting through matches, not knowing, you know, uh, the previous match, how long it's going to take. So sometimes to wake you up wow. does help. Fantastic. I'm curious to know your verdict on this. Gulab jamun. Mm. It's uh, very, very nice, but it does have a distinctively different flavour to it. So I'll tell you what that is. That is something called Pacha Karpura, edible camphor. So traditionally a lot of Indian sweets or South Indian sweets were offered as Naivedyam. 
they were offered as prasadam to the gods and okay. therefore if you have some of the naivedyam you will have the same sort of flavor that comes from the edible camphor and yeah. now when you say it it registers that you know because yeah, i am used to just smelling that camphor but now yeah that's uh, to be honest this is better for me than my gulab jamun i think the edible camphor i don't know some, <laughs> somewhere it's uh, not yet acquired <laughs> to my taste i think yeah and i think that's where the coffee comes in where we can wash it all down with some lovely that's the way to do it absolutely perfect So Rohan, I'm going to be looking out now. I'm going to watch all your matches from now on because I'm going to be. Your game, of course, is what it is, and yeah. everybody knows all the stats and everything. But to get that shot, to it's see like you there see on the court, <laughs> that will really be carrying forward the cause of Indian coffee. Two hundred percent. I think if I have to, you know, do that filter. But uh, you know, having said that, since we tried the filter coffee here. Huh. Let's go try the Rohan Bopanna Master Blend, and I really want you to try my coffee at Maverick and Farmer. Fantastic! That's that's something I know you haven't tried, and I would love for you to try. Fantastic! So like they say, Namdu, MTR in the batting I do. We finished feasting here at MTR. The dosa, the ravioli, and many cups of coffee, along with the damrot and the gulab jamun. Next stop. Maverick and Farmer for the Rohan Bopanna Master Blend Coffee. Coffee. Fantastic. In tennis, my serve is my strength. So ah. today I'm going to serve you Master Blend from the Maverick and Farmer Cafe. And I'm sure it's going to be an ace, huh? <laughs> it hundred percent will be an ace. Fantastic. <laughs> so we are also going to infuse it with a little bit of cinnamon smoke. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video don't forget to subscribe like share and leave a comment below happy eating